About an hour from Indonesia's second biggest city, Surabaya, the village of Bangun is being swallowed by plastic waste. In the front yards of homes, on almost every spare piece of land, piles and piles of garbage, sent here from all over the world, including Australia. Brought in by recycling companies, which pay the people of Bangun to help sort it. Walking around, it doesn't take long for the Aussie brands to just sort of pop up out of the rubbish. They're so familiar. And you just can't help but think of everyone back home carefully separating their garbage, only for it to end up here. It's just bizarre. For the children of Bangun, it's just another place to play. For their parents, it's a livelihood. We're doing this for our children, to pay for their schools, to pay for all kinds of expenses. The people here depend on this recycling business. Supiyati has been sorting waste for eight years. I found a gold tooth once. I sold it for $80. She now employs four pickers, who are paid around $4 a day. At regular intervals, trucks from the nearby pulp and paper factory come to tip their loads. Bangun's pickers get to work, separating the plastics. Whatever can be sold for recycling is tied up in bundles and taken away. And anything considered worthless is brought to the banks of the river and set alight. We're exporting a bit more than 4 million tonnes a year on average, and about 20% of that is going to Indonesia at the moment. Dr Joe Picken uses customs data to track Australian recycling. He says for years it's been cheaper for Australia to send it offshore. We've had a bonanza. Recycling has been so cheap. They've been paying us for our recycling uh, so well that um, it, it's been a bonanza for us financially. But now we've got, to, we've got to cope with it. We're going to have to pay a bit more. We're going to have to sort it more. We are, in effect, exporting pollution. Sugeng was born in Bangun and today is one of the few people here not involved in the recycling trade. He fishes well out of town these days, but wants to show us the spot where he used to throw his nets. Well, we've just arrived at this lake that Pak Sagung used to swim in as a kid, and it just stinks. A really acrid smell that gets stuck in the back of your throat. It's just uh, no good at all. Sugeng says the runoff from the factory which processes recycled paper has killed his childhood playground. When I was a boy, the water was clean in this area. We could swim, play with our friends, it was all nature. But no one can play in the river anymore because the water is polluted from the paper factories. And he believes all that plastic is making the town sick. I can't tell you for sure if they actually died because of the pollution, but many of my friends died young. The people in the cities of Solo and Jogjakarta, they die of old age, but not here. Microplastic is very dangerous for our body. It's domestic waste because you can find a lot of kind of the plastic. All people in Surabaya drink from this river. So they will be go inside our body, our blood. It's become a carcinogenic matter for us. Since China closed the door on all imported waste, throwing the world's recyclers into chaos, more and more plastic is being smuggled here among shipments of paper. So these businesses in China that were 
taking all this stuff, they were sorting it out. The residual waste management was poor, there was lots of pollution to do with this process. And although the businesses want it, the government has just said, no, nah, we don't want this anymore. That sent it to other countries, and now those other countries, they're starting to close the doors as well. Now Indonesia has had enough. This week, customs officers rejected 210 tonnes of Australian paper waste, which was contaminated with plastic, electronics, dirty nappies and other materials. All eight containers are being sent back to Australia. Uh, I think in the end, the, the appropriate response is to say, OK, well, sorry about that, and we have to start cleaning it up onshore. It's not sustainable, they don't want it anymore. The writing's on the wall, even though it's still happening, we've got to fix it up. So has the whole world. Very few we spoke to here want the rivers of recycled waste to stop. Picking plastic, they believe, is their only shot at a better life for their kids. It's important that my children don't end up like their parents. That's all I want. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.